see these different states. So for example, here's portrait. Um, here's uh, a snap view, for example, when I drag the application to the left side of the screen. Here's the other, the opposite side of it, what we call the flip view. And I can see that the app actually does exactly what I want and, and, and reacts very well to those changes. And you can explore it at different resolutions and preview it all throughout. Exactly. So we've really made it easy to build these Metro-style apps so that they work in the environment that your customers will have. Right, right. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to save the changes I made. We're going to go back into Visual Studio, reload these things, and I'm going to build and run again. And now you're going to see, here's my app. The canvas is centered. It still works. I can, sw I can swipe up and get the app bar up. Here's my pick photo button. And it all works perfectly. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with this. This, by the way, was 58 lines of code. Try writing that in another platform on another, in, with, I, I challenge you to do that in only 58 <laughs> lines of code. Um, so I'm happy with my app. What I'd really like to do, Stephen early on talked about the number of Windows users who are out there. Obviously, um, I would love to be able to share my app with millions and millions of-, of, of Hundreds users. of millions. Hundreds, well, millions and millions, yes. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm actually gonna post this app to the new Windows Store. Um, you might have noticed here there is a store menu in Visual Studio, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and I'm going to uh, pick upload package. So what this is going to do is this basically packages up my app into the, 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 the default uh, package format for, for, window, for new apps. And this takes me to the onboarding portal for the, for the store. So this is the part of the portal where I would fill out all the information about my app, descriptions, screenshots, all sorts of things like that. I've actually filled out a bunch of this stuff already, so you don't have to watch me do it. Uh, but I did leave this one section empty, which is the selling details. And this is the part where I can pick a price for my app. I'm going to, let's make it eight bucks. It's Windows 8, right? Um, <laughs> you think I'm optimistic? It's 58 <laughs> lines. I think you're cheesy. <laughs> um, now, one thing that's interesting, um, there's, you know, there's a rich licensing model that's built into the app format itself. So I'm not, I don't have to you know, do anything other than select the price, and the licensing model makes sure that only people who bought the app can actually use it, and you can't just pass them around, and that as a developer, your work is protected. One of the things that the licensing model actually allows is trials. So here I'm going to pick a seven-day trial. So this is going to let people actually download my app and try it before they have to buy it. I'm going to click a few more things here, uh, set the release, just say when it's ready to go, I, please, I want it released immediately. We'll set a, ca a category for it, put it in photos. Um, there is a checkbox here about accessibility. Obviously, accessibility support is really important. So this reminds us to make sure that we've done all the right work to make our app accessible. Um, and I'm going to hit save. Now, as you can see, I've actually filled out all of the information for my application. Uh, and I'm going to go click Submit to Certification. Um, so this is an interesting process. We are going to have a certification process for our applications. Part of the promise of the store to users of Windows is that the apps that they're going to get, to get to use are going to be safe, are going to be high quality, and all those things. And part of the way we do that is through this process. Um, these processes tend to be a little bit infamous at yeah. this point. There's a little bit of, you know, they, they sometimes feel like these, these bureaucratic black holes that things just kind of disappear in. So part of the way we've been thinking about this is we want to go out of our way to make this process as transparent as we possibly can. So part of what you're seeing here on the screen is actually we're going to do a really great job of showing you where in the process your app is. I mean, we sort of made it so it's like ordering pizza. So you get all of the steps are really visible to you and you know exactly where your app is along the way. Exactly. One, uh, one thing that's worth pointing out here is there's a a technical compliance step in this, which is where we check the APIs and make sure that you're doing all the right things technically. This is typically one of those really opaque things that people don't really know what goes on, what get, gets checked. We're actually going to give developers all of the technical compliance tools so that they can actually run these in advance and know what the output is and just make sure that their app actually meets all the requirements there. Okay, so what we're going to do, let's go have a look at the store itself at this point. So you've got to sort of figure that time has passed. What I've actually done is I actually submitted this app before so that we already have it in the store, and I can show it to you. So I'm going to switch to this other machine here uh, and show you the store itself. So right up here at the top left, you'll see there's a store tile. I'm going to click on that and show you that here I am in the Windows Store. 
Um, so this is, it's actually our design philosophy for the Windows Store has been to just keep it really, really simple and make it easy for people to browse and find the kinds of things they need, or if they know exactly what they're looking for, they can just search and go find that app specifically. Um, it's organized into sections. This first section that you see here on the left is called the Spotlight section, and that's a programmed section of the store. If you've used app stores or been you know, involved in app stores before, this is a really, really important area because it's a chance for us to highlight and spotlight apps that are new and noteworthy, things that we think are particularly cool and really great apps. Um, there's also an opportunity for us in there to do some program content around just thematic things. So for example, here we've built a build section in the store where we can put apps that are related to the, to the, to the build conference. As I scroll to the right here, as I move over to the right, you can see sections there's, or categories. There's a games category and then there's a social category, entertainment and all those things. Um, I'm going to go back here and just drill into the games category. And what you see here is, again, is a really easy to browse list of games and apps that are in there. I can filter if I want, so if I want to go look at you know, paid apps or freed apps or something like that, that's all super easy to do. Um, one thing that's worth pointing out, by the way, I, these, this, this, uh, the, the store, of course, is an app. And it's a Metro-style app built using all the Metro-style controls. You'll notice the grid control and things like that that I'm using here. It's actually built using HTML and JavaScript. So if you think for a second that these web technologies aren't solid enough or performant enough to actually build really, really serious stuff with, we've taken an app that is really, really important, I yeah. think, to Windows and decided to build it using those technologies. And it works just fine. Um, Not bit more than fine. It's no, great. it works <laughs> great, exactly. So I'm going to go back up to... Uh, to the top of the store here, and I'm going to drill into this build section, and this is where actually my photo doodle app is. So if you look at the bottom here, you can see that it's, uh, say, that it's in here, and I'm going to go click on the tile for it. And what you see here is what we call the app listing page. So this is actually a really rich page that gives you, as a developer, a chance to actually market your app. So you can do things like show, show so I'm going to scroll back down, show screenshots. Um, I can just, you know, give a nice rich description of what the app does, and I can really do, you know, do the best job I can at trying to sell the app. Also for consumers or for users of the store, it's a great chance to see what the app does and what the requirements are and things like that. So you see your app gets listed in this cool Metro style application that people can swipe through or you know, view on all of their screens and just have a great experience of being immersed in your application. That's right. So I'm going to hit try here and we're going to actually download the app and I'm going to go confirm. And so what you can see here, what it's doing is it's actually downloading the license and installing the app. It's already done. I'm going to go back to the start screen. If I go scroll over to the right, there it is. It's installed on my system. I can run it. There you go. Wow. Simple enough. One more thing. I'm going to show you one more thing in the store, thing. though. Yeah. Um, so we didn't, you know, it turns out we didn't just invent applications this week. What, people, yeah, like Win32 apps. Are all people over have been place. writing Win32 apps. There are million, I mean, it's a big part of what makes Windows Windows is these millions of applications that people have written. So I'm going to go back to the store here and show you something. We actually have, I'm going to scroll over, let's see, where's... Um, the finance section, you'll notice down at the bottom left here, there's an app called Quicken. It's not a Metro-style app. It's a, you know, it's a desktop app. I'm going to click on it. Here's a product. Here's an app description page for Quicken. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to list Win32 apps as well as Metro-style apps in the store. Things that, something that's in, one interesting part of this is that we're not actually going to require, because a lot, there's been tons of investment around these things, and, and, and all these apps, you know, these big apps, there's websites where they get sold and they have their own licensing models and all those things. We're not going to require people to actually rewrite those things in order to, live, to have them in the store. So we're not going to force them to use our licensing right. model. Because we, we, we love the ecosystem that's around Windows applications, and we want to make sure that it blossoms in this world as well. Exactly. So in essence, what we're doing here is we're giving these Win32 apps a free listing service and exposing them to, million, you know, to all of the hundreds of millions of Windows users. Cool. Um, now, you mentioned some stuff about XAML and things like that. What's up there? That's right. Let's talk about XAML for a second. Any XAML or Silverlight fans in the room? I, I think they're all sitting over, well, here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so this is something that probably looks familiar to you if you are a, uh, a Silverlight developer. This is actually Scott Guthrie's blog. Um, and a couple of years ago, he wrote this series of eight posts that basically described how to build this cool little Silverlight client app. And then it's a cool app because it actually shows off a lot about XAML layouts and XAML controls and data binding and network access and all those things. And so what I've done is I've actually downloaded the code from this app and just tried to build it in Windows. So what I'm going to do in Windows 8. So what I'm going to do here is just hit a five. This is just this is downloaded straight off the um, off that website, off the blog, and what you see is the app right here running 
In the, so it's running in the browser. This is the desktop browser, IE10. Which is the same rendering engine as the IE10 that Julie showed you. Exactly. But this is a Silverlight app still, right? And um, it works exactly the same way it worked in Windows 7. One thing you'll notice, for example, though, is it's not a, it's not a Metro app. So it doesn't, for example, the input stack doesn't give me touch access and things like that. Um, so, but it runs perfectly well because everything that runs on this Windows 7 PC is going to run on Windows 8 as well. Exactly. Exactly. So it's part of the compatibility guarantees that we make. But what we'd really like to do is take this and make it a metro style app. So I'm gonna, what I've done here is um, I'm going to close this project and show you a different one that I've created that basically is just, um, I've taken all the files from, that pro from, that, from, Scott's, from Scott's project and, mo and moved them into a Windows 8 uh, project. So now this isn't, you know, you wouldn't like, we're moving it from one runtime environment, Silverlight, to a different runtime environment, which is Windows 8. And the runtime environments are different. Um, and so you're not going to expect this thing to just compile, but how close do you think it's going to get? Well, it turns out, actually, that I've only, had made, I, I've only had to make a handful of changes to this. Um, there's some, and most of them are actually just namespace changes. Yeah. So, the, names, so the, the API changes are kind of reflected in the, these changes in the namespace. And you can see some of that here. It's really just, it just amounts to, ch to changing these using statements. Um, the other things I've changed in here are uh, actually the networking API is a little bit different. So the networking API in Windows is pretty sophisticated now because it gives you access to you know, 3G networks yeah. and these, all these things. So WinRT has a very broad networking API that you're able to tap into. Exactly. And so you'll have to change that kind of code. Exactly. And then the last thing is actually this app launches uh, web pages in Silverlight. It does that through the browser. There's a launching API in Windows. Um, so I've only, basically, this is a handful of changes I've made. I mean, it's three places in this file, and then there's another namespace thing in another file. I'm going to go hit F5 and check it out. So now this looks pretty familiar, except that this is actually just a full-on Metro app. It's not running in the browser. Oh, we're, we're not even close to done. <laughs> um, so one thing, though, is, you know, it still looks, it doesn't really look like a Metro app yet. And it also doesn't do some of the things that make Metro apps Metro apps, you know, like, you know, participating in this web of apps and things like that. But so you still used all that code. I, exactly. I've reused basically all, I didn't change any XAML, I didn't change any, you know, I didn't change any of the data binding code. All that stuff just works. It just came across. Everything you know about that applies here. Um, what I'm going to go do is make one other small change here. So I'm going to go in actually into the XAML, and you can see right here is where we bind the data to that list box view. I'm just going to get rid of that, and instead I'm going to bind it to the, uh, the, to the to Windows 8 grid view. So this is the grid view that I showed you in, in, in Blend earlier. It's a native grid view written in native code for, for Windows 8's Metro-style apps. Exactly. Um, I'm going to make one other small change here. I'm going to go into uh, this just the initial, the, this uh, C-sharp file, and I'm going to um, just write two more lines of code. And what this does is this is basically going to, this is going to allow me to actually activate the, to, to, to connect the search charm to this. So this I, is just another one of those contracts and two lines of code connects you up to search. Exactly. I need to do one other thing. I'm going to go into the app manifest and I'm just going to declare that it actually supports search. And there we go. So I've done that. Let's build and run this. Whoops. We're going to save my changes. Sorry about that. I'm going to build and run this thing again. Hey, look at it now. That's wow. starting to look pretty cool. So now it's in my grid. Look at it. Scroll through it. Works great. Let's go over to the, uh, to, the, to the start page. And you can see here now, if I do search and I type something like London, you'll see that actually image search is the second one from the bottom is now enabled. And I can just, I can just click on it if I can get my finger in the right place. And there it is. It got invoked there. Wow. Again. Now. Doesn't Microsoft use XAML in one other place? There is one other place. And I'm going to switch to another machine and show you one more thing. The phone. So um, I took, again, this this, uh, Scott's files and turned them into, actually just copied them into a phone project. And here again, I made one small change. And it's actually that same place, the same code that we used to launch on the phone. It works a little bit differently. I'm going to hit F5. Oh, why not? There we go. All set. One line of code. One no line change. of code change. So we, what we showed you was using the Windows runtime made a really cool Metro app, but then that same code you could use across the different apps because it was just built on this rich XAML infrastructure. That exactly. You can, so yeah. all of your knowledge around XAML, around C Sharp, around Silverlight, and all that stuff, it just carries straight across to here and really lets you do things across all these different platforms in a really easy Plus, way. Plus, you can also write your applications in HTML5 and JavaScript 
all using these amazing new tools between uh, Developer Studio and, and Expressions Blend. Exactly. There we Excellent. go. Well, thanks so much, Antoine. Thanks, everyone. If you thought we scratched the surface with what Julie showed, we really just scratched the surface on the developer platform and tools. So what did we just show you? Well, first and foremost, there's a new set of APIs and tools to build these Metro-style apps. So you get a modern...